Hi everyone. Thank you so much for clicking to watch this video. If you are new here, my name is Sandy and on this channel, we talk about all things interior design. And in today's video, we're talking about classes you take as an interior design student in your second year. If at the end of this video, you like what you found here, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget the notification bell so that you don't miss any more videos from me. A notification you really won't want to miss is next week's video about part two of classes that you take as an interior design student your second year. So today's video is part one. I'm going to be going over three classes that you take in your second year. And next week I'll be going over three more classes that you take for your second year in interior design school. This video is a continuation of another video I did on my channel called interior design classes you take as a first year student. So if you haven't watched that video first, pause. All right, stop. In the name of love. <laughs> what am I doing? So stop this video and then go to watch the first video that I did about classes you take your first year. I'm gonna put a card here and link it down below for you guys, just so that you understand some classes that I may be referencing in the first video. Now let's get into it. As a disclaimer, these are classes that were on schedule to me my second year, you may have them in your first year or in your third year, and my classes may have different names than your classes had, but the content will generally be the same. So let's get into it. One of the classes you'll take your second year in design school is history of architecture. My school, I believe, called it history of architecture, furniture, and interiors, but we learned about it all together, but your school could potentially split them up. And in that class, you learn about the literally the history of architecture and the, our teacher started from the stone age all the way to the present and we went over different design styles design errors uh different designers architects uh even decorators and how they got their start how they became famous what styles they were known for and their contribution into society and how we see architecture and furniture and interiors today we learned about everything like i said from the stone age literally when someone would take a bunch of stones and pile them together and be like, that's a building, <laughs> to what we do now with concretes and metals and steels and, and all this different stuff that's highly more complex than what was being done before. In addition to the general overview of how we see architecture today and the different styles and errors, eras, <laughs> uh, we also learned about really, really technical things. So a column versus a column order, different kinds of chairs versus stools and benches. What is a trestle table versus a, a table that probably has like four legs or um, just different architectural things. Side note, if you guys would like a video on different design errors or notable architects that I learned about in that class, I would love to make it for you because it might you know, give you some insight into what you'd be learning. So comment that down below and give this video a like if you want that. Assignments in this class included lots of tests. There were tons and tons and tons of tests that had to look tons of index cards and vocab words and quizlets and things that I did. But in addition to that, we also had to draw we had to pick different design styles and chairs from those styles and those eras and draw that out. I will insert some pictures of the chairs that I drew if I still have them. I hope so. If not, then this is blank next to me. <laughs> we also had to do a presentation on a designer. You. I think we just picked one or we picked out of a hat or something like that. And I had to present, for example, on Eileen Gray, who was an Irish uh, female architect and designer. Another class you'll run into your second year in design school is art history classes. My school had, I believe, four different art history classes. One, two, three, and then the last one was contemporary art for the art of today, basically. Uh, and it's structured basically the same way as the history class, lots of tests, sometimes quizzes, uh, just quizzing you on different designers and things like that. But it again, just takes you through the beginning of art as we know it, probably from like cave drawings all the way up to art that's displayed in museums today and that's famous today. We go over different designers, not designers, artists, sorry. We go over different artists and how, how they had impact on art today, what their contribution was to art at the time. 
What I thought was really fun about this class and what I wasn't expecting was the amount of religion that we learned about in this class. A lot of early, early art uh, was commissioned for churches. And you learn a lot about churches, church architecture, and what that religion called for because uh, in early society, it was pictorial. People could not read or write if they were not, you know, clergymen or some political official or something like that. So a lot of what was in the Bible was communicated through pictures and they would commission artists to paint these pictures and tell people basically, okay, well, the Bible says this and give them some kind of art to interpret that, to interpret, 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 in, what? The pictures were used to give them some kind of interpretation of what the Bible said. So you learn a lot about churches and a lot about art that was commissioned for those churches. The last class I'm going to be talking about in this video is space planning. <sighs> this class was hard, okay? Hard, <laughs> in all caps. That is how I felt about that class. Not because the actual items themselves are difficult, it, it's just the, the amount of time everything takes and also just training yourself to think differently. So when I first heard about space planning, I thought it was oh, I'm just gonna take this sofa and I'm gonna put it over here and then I'm gonna create like walkways with furniture and I'm gonna have these two armchairs over here. I thought that I was going to be planning out like where all the furniture was going in the space. Nope, that is a cross, this is an X. I don't know what's going on with me today, y'all. No, like that emoji, I'm gonna insert it in here somewhere. That is not what this class is about. It is not about, oh, what fun, tile am I going to use? Am I going to go terrazzo or am I using Calcutta? Am I going to be using um, stained glass windows or regular windows? What kind of fun light fixtures am I going to have? All those things eventually you will do them but that is not the core of what the class is about so it's not about any of those things, right? So what is it about Sandy? I'm going to tell you. So space planning is literally what it sounds like, planning out a space. And what I mean by that is not with furniture and added things, but you plan out the space with walls. So in the class, you're given four walls of a structure. You're told what that structure is supposed to be and, and what and who it needs to accommodate, what um, and what activities will be going on there. And then you have to decide where all the interior walls are going to go. I'm going to go over how my class was structured. Yours may be structured totally differently, but I think this might give you guys just an idea of what space planning actually is. One of the first assignments I had to do in this class was go to a store and observe human interaction and observe all of the architecture of the space and how walkways were put together in the space. I chose Barnes & Noble because it was close to my school and where I lived. I went there, I took pictures of Barnes & Noble, I had to sketch out a floor plan. I literally just sat there in their little cafe section and just draw like a little hand sketch of all the bookcases, where the music section was, where the gift section was, where the games were, and the kitty section was in the back. I had to look at varying ceiling heights, what kind of lighting were they using, where were all the outlets located, and then I had to infer how the space was supposed to function based off how a Barnes & Noble is structured. I will insert some photos, I think, of the Barnes & Noble that I went to and the notes that I took, but then I had to present that, those findings to my class. I think other people might have gone to another retail space, but it had to be a public space and they had to sell things there. Some classes, just so you know, some classes will have you do one project the entire class and you'll just do different phases of that project all quarter long or all semester long. The particular class that I had, the professor had us do two different projects in that class. One was a little bit more rushed and then on the last one we kind of took a little bit more time. So our first project was a community center and we had to uh, get a community center, you're told what city it's in, and you have to learn about climates and stuff in that city and, and the population and and um, just like learn different demographical information about that city. And then you learn about the site that your, that your building is on and you're given the uh, blank floor plan that's just all four walls and then whatever landscaping is around the building. But there's no interior walls. After that, 
you are then given a list of criteria of what needs to be in this space and how it needs to function. And you as a student have to make what's called a criteria matrix. I will, however, briefly explain what a criteria matrix is. It's basically just um, a table uh, with columns and rows of each room that needs to be in the facility and what each room needs to contain. So it'll tell you, oh, you need an office that's at least 750 square feet and it has to be wheelchair accessible and it will be for the manager and then you need this much square footage for the receptionist and there needs to be this much square footage for the waiting room area or that kind of thing. Uh, there needs to be an art gallery or something like that. So it's literally every single room that's going to be there, the bathroom, everything, and how much space each one needs to have and who is going to be functioning in that space and what they'll be doing. So you need to understand, okay, this person needs this much space. Where am I gonna put that in the building? Am I gonna put it here in the middle? Do they need natural light? Am I gonna put it over here by this corner where there are windows? You have to consider things like, is this bathroom accessible for someone who's in a wheelchair? For example, a wheelchair needs five feet at least to turn around and make a full 360 circle. So that's something to consider. Or is the doorway big enough? Wheelchairs are on average, I believe, 30 inches wide and a doorway therefore needs to be at least 32 inches wide interior doorways so that someone can wheel through it. Uh, those kinds of things. Do you need both male and female bathrooms? Or is it a place where you can just have one bathroom? Uh, just those kinds of things. So you have to consider all of those factors and then plan out this whole space. And then after you're done doing all the walls and the pathways and everything, then at the end of all that is when you'd pick, oh, I'm gonna put this furniture in here and I'm gonna use subway tile for this and I'm gonna put uh, blue walls here and da 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 da. Uh, but you don't even think about that stuff till the very end because you're busy planning out the space and there are different kinds of ways that you progress into planning out the space. There's bubble charts, there's a blocking charts, there are adjacency uh, bubbles or adjacency matrix, I forget what it's called. After the community center part was over, because we were given a community center to do, we then went into doing a um, office space. So basically our teacher kind of gave us like a warmer up, like a, a warm up with that with that project. And then she wanted, she and she didn't grade it as harshly. And then she expected the final project to be like on point. These projects can take like 50 hours to do guys. And then there are presentation boards that you have to do at the end. It's a lot, you have to do lots of drawings. So you have to do, for example, a drawing of every single room, and then you have to do um, a floor plan for every floor if you have a place that has multiple floors. Thank God, ours was only one floor. Oh my goodness, if it had two floors, I might have never left that classroom alive. <laughs> Overall, your assignments for this class will be all the different drawings that you do, the different presentations that you do of your research findings, and uh, your presentation all the way at the end where you talk about your concept, you put everything on a board, you present it to the class, and then you had to have um, um, a booklet and different drawings. I will insert, I think, some pictures I have of mine somewhere here on the screen so, so that you can get a good picture of how I did it. Uh, but I hope this was super helpful for you guys. If you liked this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell because in next week's video, you guys, I'm going over three more classes that you take your second year. And those classes are going to be helpful in the classes I just talked about. They're gonna correlate. For example, I just talked about space planning and how you have to plan out all the walls and where they go. There is software that helps you do this so that it goes a lot faster than hand drawing it because I had to hand draw everything. I'm, I'm going to start talking to you guys about different softwares that you use, software classes, what that means, um, why they're important. And I don't want you guys to miss out on that video. So make sure that notification bell is turned on because next week, Tuesday, all right, next week, Tuesday, I'm going to be uploading that video for you guys. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, you guys, stop playing the YouTube field. You're out here dating all these other channels and you just need to commit and marry my channel. And by marry, I mean subscribe, please, uh, hit that subscribe button down there. Watch some more videos over here because I have tons more content for you. <laughs> All right, bye.